Hey everybody, it's Bobby from BrewHardware.com and we're here playing around with the new RIMS tube system and uh, it's really just to determine a few data points as far as what the performance is and uh, we're looking at a couple different uses of it. So the first thing I want to do is determine what kind of temperature rise you can get running the uh, 5500 watts and 1375 watts at full on duty cycle so um, just like flipping a switch and turning it on I want to I want to measure uh, how much flow rate we have and how much temperature Delta we have so the dial in the flow rate to have some realistic numbers I thought I would uh, try to tune it to a rate that is pretty common with brewing such as fly sparging where you want to flow at about a quart per minute uh, so if you want to get 30 quarts out of it it would take about 30 minutes to do that um, it's not a really hard rule but that's sort of a target where a lot of people um, shoot for so I'm going to use a uh, timer on my phone and a measuring cup and instead of measuring out a full quart and hoping for 30, uh, 60 seconds to show up I'm going to try to collect two cups uh, in 30 seconds and if, if that doesn't work out I will adjust the pump uh, output valve accordingly. This is looking promising about one cup at 16 seconds and I'm trying to hold the everything as level as possible which is a little tricky. Wow Alright, so I got lucky there. That was exactly 30 seconds to reach the um, two cups or half a quart. Uh, right now, the PID is reading the top of the rims tube. and say 47, 48 degrees. It's, now I put the controller into manual mode. And I'm going to set the duty cycle to 100% so that the element will come on and stay on. Okay, 100% duty cycle on manual mode. So you'll see now that the output light has turned on solid. That's what that light right there means. That light means that it's in manual mode. Okay. So starting now, I'm going to put, I'm going to flip the switch to 120 volts. So it lagged behind a little bit because it takes a little while for the element itself to heat up. But based on the fact that we're feeding this with a constant input temperature water and that the element is staying on 100% of the time and we're not changing the flow rate, once this settles into a certain output temperature uh, it will not change at that point definitely feels warmer could be seven all right before we overflow this bucket here I just verified the flow rate to be about a liter per minute. So I uh, measured 500 milliliters in 30 seconds. And uh, remember we have uh, like 47 degree Fahrenheit coming in 
and right now we have 77 coming out. So at 1375 watts directly in line, uh, you know, we're getting a 30 degree rise, and that's at one liter per minute. All right, so I'm going to reset everything, and then we're going to do it again at the full 5,500 watts. See what happens. So we have the same uh, liter per minute flow rate going. I didn't change any of the valves. And again, I have the, uh, the manual mode set at 100% duty cycle, so the PID is trying to fire the element right now, but I don't have the switch enabled. Again, it's going to take a little time for that element to kick on and start really putting out some heat. We may even see it uh, sputtering a little bit. We might see uh, some boiling in the tube. I don't know. It's shooting up pretty quick though. But that, that water's coming out hot right now. No doubt about it that you can use this for sparging. It's coming out at 180, call it 87. So 57 to 187 is 130 degree rise at a liter a minute. And I think it'd be a good idea to double check that flow rate. It's actually running a little faster than a liter a minute. That's one liter and 53 seconds. So now we're boiling in the tube for sure. So you can see that getting it to output at sparge temperatures based on flow rate alone is definitely tricky because you, you reach a point where it starts boiling inside the tube and then spurts like this. Now certainly we can try uh, dialing in the PID uh, in automatic mode and see what happens. So let's uh, set the set point here at a sparge temperature. Let's take it out of manual mode. So you can see that because 170 is our set point and it's coming out at 178, it has de deactivated the element. But you will definitely see quite a bit of surging in this small volume environment. Because the element turned off, it dropped way down. So now it's got it on full time. Okay, it's trying not to overshoot. It shut the element off a little early. Now, keep in mind, I had not auto-tuned in this configuration, so it's not exactly set properly for that purpose. So you can see, it fluctuates quite a bit.
But if you auto-tune this, you may be able to get this to, uh, to react to that small volume environment so that you can sparge directly through here. You're going to have to uh, experiment a bit.